we are live both on Zoom and Facebook, and I always guess it via our very punctual attendees who are joining promptly at four, uh, at least Central is, uh, set time, Berlin time. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today, especially thanks to our special guests, because they took their time in order to invest in this webinar and present their study programs, which is uh, really nice since you have the opportunity to ask questions directly to a specific uh, study program, and it's not always happening. So take this chance and enjoy today actually the second part of the management uh, webinar series. We had the first um, webinar yesterday, which was also, I think, very fruitful and uh, attendees enjoyed it as well as speakers. And today we have our second part. If you are the one who was not there yesterday and you have never seen me, my name is Nino. Uh, I'm counselor, uh, study counselor at Magerman University, joining you from Bremen, but I'm from Georgia. That's why my accent is neither German nor English, something strange in between. All right, uh, before I start and um, before we actually I join Eileen, who is my colleague and great moderator, we will be both in the background today. And before um, I start with a small introduction, I would like to uh, ask Eileen if she can to uh, give some words about herself. Um, yes, and if you course. want, uh, I can share the presentation for you or you can. No, no, it's yeah. fine. I ha uh, hello, everyone. Maybe some of you already know me from other webinars, but uh, for the newcomers, my name is Eileen. I'm Brazilian, and I was once an international student in Germany. So it's also a pleasure to be able to share some of my personal experience with you guys. And um, you must know that you are very lucky that uh, my German university exists now uh, to help you uh, because uh, when I was applying, uh, it didn't exist yet. So um, uh, you can find a lot of useful information uh, in our webinars and in our websites. So I would just like to give a short introduction about uh, my German university. Uh, if you come to, uh, to our website, uh, this is the first thing you will see. And we are Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. So there are more than 2,200 programs uh, in English, including bachelor's and master's programs. And you can find them all in our study finder. Uh, this is a short version, but if you click here, you will find uh, the extended version with all the filters. Um, and we also have a lot of comprehensive articles published in our website about uh, different topics related to studying in Germany. And here we also have links to external resources that you will need in the process of applying for a position or for a visa. Um, so make sure you don't forget to check them out. Here, uh, as you know, we have webinars every week um, and you can sign up for them in our website. Uh, you can choose the ones that interest you the most and you have a chance to ask your questions live in the Q&A section. And um, we are a startup based in Hamburg, Germany. And even though we have the name university in our name, we are not a university and we are not a scholarship foundation. Uh, we actually offer counseling for international students who, are, uh, who wants to study in Germany. And we are very proud to have an international team um, based not only in Germany, but also uh, like me in Brazil and in China, in Spain. And um, I think that's it on my side. And now I will go back to Nino so she can uh, give an introduction. And then we will move to our guest speakers. Uh, just uh, for the rules, uh, you cannot type anything in the chat, but you can send your questions in the Q&A section. And me and Nino, during the presentation, we will be sharing 
uh, important links for you in the chat. So make sure you um, open them so that you can access them later. And I would like to also thank you, our special guests for joining us. And that's it, I'll go in the background now. Enjoy the webinar, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. I will join you in a bit. Just before I give the floor to our guests, let me also share really quickly a small um, presentation from my side, which is about a, an overview of management, uh, studying management in Germany. What are the uh, databases where you can find these programs? What is the difference between the universities? So I will briefly talk about this. Uh, however, first, I would like to uh, read out the programs that will be presented today. So we have Professor Karolina Rudzinska, who will be talking about Master International Business Consulting and inter International Strategic Management. Then we have also uh, Stefan Bergman and Louis Decken, who will be talking about uh, glo Master in Global Technology Innovation Management and Professor Dr. Christian Hederer, who will be talking about European management. So uh, if you are, um, you're very welcome to ask any question you like related to studying in Germany, because Eileen and I will take care of more general questions. However, since today is this subject webinar and you have special programs, which were also visible on our page when you were signing up, uh, it's nice to, um, use this option to ask questions directed to universities or the programs and in order to make the work even more efficient we would advise you to mention the program name to which the question is referred so that we can uh, then coordinate this with the speakers and you get the best possible answer yourself all right uh, talking about uh, databases Eileen has already shown you one which is our study finder however there is another one which is Hochschule Compass and it's offered by German Rectors Conference uh, if you go to the page of Hochschule Compass we will share the link in the chat in a bit uh, you will find 415 degree programs related for management or innovation management thank you Eileen um, and out of this number there are nine 98 programs in English. Uh, however, if you are the one who wants to study in English only, like I did, then uh, you would go to our study finder, which you can see on the screen uh, and in my background. So in our study finder, you can find 323 degree programs related to the same subject. And we have even a division for you here because um, we always have questions about not only master's programs, because usually students come for master's programs, however, for bachelor as well. And here you can see on the slide that there are 75, uh, 71 bachelors uh, programs and 252 in uh, master degree and we also have this English only division what does this mean uh, when we have like this separately uh, while at the same time we are saying that we, on our database we have English taught programs so the difference is that sometimes some uh, programs be it master or bachelor they have component of German modules or seminars or some classes and maybe majority of um, the courses are taught in English however some of them may be also in German therefore to differentiate this we have this English only option and if you don't know German yet and would like to study only in English, then you choose in our filters, there is a requirement, then you have language requirement, and then no German skills needed. But we always encourage attendees to know some basics because it's easier to uh, move around and navigate and contact uh, with uh, people here when you are in Germany. But anyways, this knowledge will come since you will hear the language and it will be already familiar for you. If you are the one who is in search and just doesn't, isn't sure uh, of if he or she wants to study management or actually what's the management, studying management in Germany means, and you want to know average tuition fees, application requirements, language requirements, or just to have an overall overview of some rankings or the universities. So you can use our uh, subject page which gives a brief overview 
of what does studying management in Germany mean, what are the perspectives, and so on and so forth. I have mentioned uh, rankings, but always, always I repeat myself that international rankings are really important, but uh, when you are searching for a study program, you should be the ranking creator <laughs> because the university or the program should um, always uh, be good suit you, your requirements. Maybe it's a, only one professor who you would like to really meet, or there is a special seminar that you would like to study. Uh, and this may not be reflected or in all international rankings. However, Germany can be really proud that it's always third in international rankings and the universities are also providing high quality uh, education for free for you. All right, when we talk about universities, uh, there are roughly like division, a big like kind of division of between two groups. Uh, the first one is university or technical universities. Um, they also have programs in management. And you can see that if you you can also filter it via our study finder. And there are 72 programs um, provided, offered by technical universities or universities like generally um, in this subject. The same, the second one is universities of universities of applied sciences and they also offer the same um, programs uh, and the number is 232. Why we mention it and why it's important. So you can see a small table. Um, the biggest difference is uh, the um, concentration on studies, how it's dealt. So universities are usually more research or theory oriented, while universities of applied sciences are more practice or application oriented. Um, another difference was about PhD uh, programs, but it's not the case anymore because um, universities of applied sciences do have uh, PhD programs as well, some of them. So that's why you have this uh, cross and tick on the side, on the slide. And uh, last but not least is that whenever you're searching for a program studying management, it's not always called management, bachelor in management or master in management. So the wording can be different. The program coordinators are very creative. Maybe it's about some specific uh, management of something. So it's always mentioned. Here you can see like, grand and luxury goods management. So it's all, all also management, but a very specific management, maybe you would like to study it. And yeah, this, uh, if you check management filter in the uh, study finder, it will give you all the options which are related to it. All right, I will stop my <laughs> long speech with, which uh, was to be shortened. Um, and I'll present our uh, first speaker, Professor Karolina Rudzinska, uh, who is Chair of Strategic Management, and uh, she will talk about master program today. And here you can see uh, the university, hopefully your next university, destination university where you would like to apply. Um, and I will stop sharing my screen and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation. Um, and. Uh... That's a really nice uh, platform you have there. I think that's really fantastic, all the information and also the webinars which are offering here. So a warm welcome also from my side. My name is uh, Karolina Rodzinska. I'm a professor for strategic management at the HWR, Hochschule für Wirtschaft und Recht, yeah, the Berlin School of um, Economics and Law. And um, today I would like to give you a little bit insights of our master, it's International Business and Consultancy Master. Um, just a short, short interjection of my side as well. Um, I am a professor <clears throat> at the Fachhochschule, so it's the University of Applied Science, since two years. And uh, before I worked uh, in industry, yeah, so I have uh, practical experience in the field of consulting, but also in the field of industry. So I worked over nine years in the automotive industry. 
And actually my CV is very representative to be honest for a lot of my colleagues. Yeah, so they really have a lot of very strong um, practical, um, yeah, not only approach, but also background, which they translate and we translate in our, um, yeah, in our seminars. So um, I would like to share as well a small presentation to hopefully get all your questions answered. Um, as already said, I'm working at the Berlin School of Economics and Law since two years, and I'm the director of the strategic part of the master since this year, <laughs> since the summer. Yeah, so it's pretty new. But I have also, from the beginning on, I um, I have also um, I gave seminars in it, and I have to say, of course, I'm totally convinced about it. <laughs> so, um, what's about uh, the HWR? It's one of the biggest um, applied uh, universities of applied science in Germany. So we have more than one thousand fifty. 500 students, yeah, we have a very, very high percentage of international students. Um, however, I have to say at the same time, and that's why I really appreciate our university, we have a very good um, overview of the groups, meaning that we have a high level of assistance. Yeah, so we really try to keep the groups not too big, so you still have the uh, possibility to um, work practically to have discussions yeah and not only to get a frontal um, input from the professors or lecturers um, as already mentioned um, the master itself has two fields yeah so we have one field which is only focusing on the strategic management and we have a second field which is focusing on human resource management um, it's as one student said, it's not only for learning, but also for personal growth. <laughs> Let's see how, well, what does it mean? Yeah. And of course, it's very international and very application oriented. Yeah. So by the end of the day, we also want you to not have um, theoretical framings, let's say it that way, but also to know how to apply them practically. Um, so as you can see here, our master is uh, about three semesters. And uh, if you have 210 ACTCs, yeah? if you don't have them, then you uh, are being required to do an internship. However, the master itself starts in the winter term. And we have a variety of courses which are really only focusing on uh, project management skills or uh, also for the consultancy business. The summer term builds on it. Yeah, you're further deepening on it. You have practical projects. Yeah, and then uh, it's being finalized in the third semester by your master thesis. And as already mentioned, if you have not the 110 ACTCs, um, you can use the winter term then of an internship of minimum five months. So how is it built? Well, we have, as already said, um, some courses together, meaning those who apply for the HR part and those who apply for the strategic part. And um, here you see the overview of the courses, yeah, where you have principles of consulting, international project man management. And then the second semester is advanced consulting skills, where you really deepen what you have learned in the first semester, as well, where you can also select from a master pool elective, and you're already being prepared for your uh, master thesis, where you're being offered to have a research seminar. And additionally, we have also so-called tutorials. And the tutorials uh, have the aim to support you more on the coaching level. Uh, we are all very unique. We have unique backgrounds. We have um, unique skills. And um, based on the tutorials, we assist you to analyze those, really to have a look, OK, where I'm good in? Where would I maybe like to get better? <laughs> in order to inspire you with also uh, speakers to have a look on how does um, job profile look like. Um, so that hopefully by the end of the master, you're more clear about that. And furthermore, as I said, we have then the deepening part, 
meaning um, you have the international human resource management part where you have uh, more HR focused uh, seminars like the strategic human resource management, industry relation, corporate appointment law, training and development um, and performance and reward management. And on the other side, we have the international strategic management part, and I'm the director of this part. And here uh, you also have courses which are more focusing than <laughs> on strategy. So you have the global strategic management, international supply chain management, international strategy project, and innovation and technology management. Um, what you see here is more detailed level. You have the first semester is the winter term. And as already mentioned, right, on the left side, these are the courses which you have together, meaning the HR and strategy tract. And um, to be transparent maybe on that as well, we take per track, meaning HR and strategy, 20 students. Yeah, so I think it's a really <laughs> not a too big group, yeah. We have students from all over the world, which makes it very, very interesting and vivid. Um, and at the same time, it's still small enough that we have a lot of qualitative um, discussions and also coachings. Um, yeah, so um, I think I already said something to the principle of consulting, right? And um, so, uh, and this is the uh, winter term. So to continue, in the summer term, it builds on the winter term, as already mentioned also before, you have a more deepening on the um, advanced consulting skills. Um, you have the research seminar uh, to prepare for the master and the tutorial. Um, furthermore, I think this is also especially to mention because concerning the strategy part, I think we have a very nice USP when it comes to that course, which I do with my uh, colleague, Professor Brucher. Um, and here we have a real client project. So we have, um, I think we have now done over 53 projects yeah, with international companies and it's international strategy projects. And they give us a real case, meaning, okay, we have um, an, an, a challenge, a question, and uh, we would like to collaborate with you. So what we do is that we really prepare the students in the winter term to give them a framing, to give an understanding, to really make them to write a proposal for the client. Then they sign um, with the client this proposal, they have an agreement, and in the one, uh, summer term, you work it out and the students also present in front of the management. Um, so I think this is a very challenging project. And at the same time, all students who have successfully uh, completed it say, wow, this was very, very nice because now I not only know <laughs> what it means to be a consultant, but I really feel prepared um, <clears throat> to understand how to handle it, how to deliver it in a very structured, analytical way, sustainable, interesting solutions, which are valuable for the client. Um, and as already mentioned, um, you can, students can also in the summer term then uh, select uh, one of the 10 uh, from the master pool or electives, meaning one of those 10 uh, spe specializations. Um, yeah, some of uh, the students need to do an internship and uh, the master itself is being finalized by the master seeders, uh, as already mentioned before as well. Uh, what you see here are some examples of our business partners. Yeah, so um, yeah, I don't need to read them out. Um, international companies, some of them are um, placed in Berlin, some are not, which we really, um, I mean, it's not really needed. Um, before Corona, we were sometimes also invited to travel to the client and uh, to make the presentation at the headquarter. So it really, is uh, it's a really nice um, chance <laughs> also to get to know the company. Um, so I guess maybe some of you have the question, okay, so how do I apply? <laughs> so here are the overview of the uh, admission requirements. Um, so you need a bachelor's degree or an equivalent. Um, it's um, 
you need uh, already a business study, including minimum of 15 ECTCs in the modules, either in strategy. So if you want to apply for the strategic part, you need to have um, courses done in your be the bachelor degree uh, on strategic management, accounting and controlling, operation management or equivalent topics. If you want to apply for the HR track, then you need courses um, with, uh, which you have done uh, when you, within your bachelor and human resource management, organization, labor law, also here equivalent topics. Yes, it's an English master. <laughs> so um, we, uh, you need to prove uh, your English language skills on a high B2 level. And I mean, I will not read them out, uh, but it's provided by the standardized test. And if you have, uh, or if you have an application from countries outside the European Union, we ask you to provide a GMAT score of 600 or above. Furthermore, Besides this, um, we ask you to hand in a letter of motivation and um, a resume for evaluation of program fit. And here on the left, you see the application deadline. I would just like to highlight that it depends if you have a German university degree, yeah, then you apply via our university platform. If you have um, done your um, degree abroad, then we kindly ask you to hand your applications via Uni Assist. There are no tuition fees. Yeah. However, we have um, semester fees. I think these are very standardized semester fees in Germany. It's around 300 euros per semester. Yeah, and it's already including the transport semester ticket, meaning you can move free with the publics uh, within Berlin. So I'm coming to my end uh, because I think which is always important, <laughs> just the professor to see what the students say. Um, and I will just leave it. My fellow students, I think they're very ambitious, very thirsty for knowledge. And on the other hand, well, I'm 29 years old and um, I'm not the youngest and not the oldest, <laughs> which is great. I love that. Um, so you get a good mixture of people coming together. So Berlin is such a beautiful city to live. As you can see from behind, there's a fancy tour. We're on a blue path in the middle of the Berlin. So there are a few reasons that I enjoy Berlin. Because, for example, Berlin is uh, people are from all over the world. Um, they, have, they have different multicultural backgrounds, so very international cities. And second reason that after the graduations, even you don't speak perfect German, you could find a job easily here because of Berlin is a tech startup hub. Uh, just like the San Francisco and Sydney Europe. So, IBCON is very project oriented. So, you're not sitting in the classroom all day. Uh, we interacted with several companies, um, and uh, through that, we're able to, uh, everyone pretty much had multiple job offers after uh, the program. So, oh, just some um, statements of the students. Yeah, I really like this. I mean, we are like a tech startup hub. <laughs> Besides this, yes, we have <laughs> Berlin is a nice city. Um, so if you have any questions, please reach out. Yeah, we have the um, uh, Mrs. Koch. I mean, she knows all when it comes to application administry aspects. Yeah, and my uh, colleague, Mrs. Uh, Professor Dr. Monika Hüßmann, she is the academic director for the HR track. And as already mentioned, I'm for the strategy track. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, I think the presentation was really interesting and engaging. And um, as you were going through it, we had more and more questions. So usually we have um, Q&A at the end, but let's have this uh, more interactive part right now, uh, because there were some questions regarding previous degree. You have already mentioned that it should be in business uh, or related field. Um, can there be any waivers or do you, uh, maybe we will write the email of um, Ms. Koch, uh, for the students can contact her directly because you mentioned she is for admission requirements. Uh, but if you um, know any case when the person from a different field 
not only like business bachelor uh, could apply maybe because of a work experience or are there any exceptions? Of course, not too many in details. Uh, we will write the email in a chat, but if you would like to elaborate a bit on that. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest, um, it's very difficult to answer it very broadly because every of us has a very individual background. So we, we get really a lot of a lot of applications and we go through all the applications individually. Uh, however, I have to mention it's a consecutive uh, bachelor, uh, master, right? So we uh, that's why we also have it only in three semesters you're done. So we start on a high level. And in order to uh, successfully um, uh, achieve it, you need to have the knowledge within these fields. Otherwise, it really does not make really sense, yeah? Because then you have to catch up. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, we look for equivalent topics, yeah, but we really must uh, take into consideration that you have knowledge, not only working experience, but also fundamental, um, yeah, of course, I don't know, uh, theoretical knowledge in it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, yes, Mrs. Koch and uh, the team at the Harvard Air, uh, if you have specific questions, just reach out, write them an email, and they can have an individual look on your application and give you feedback on that. Thank you. Uh, one more question was about the two paths which you mentioned, or two parts. Uh, the person was asking, is it possible to take both of them? <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's a nice one. <laughs> Well, not parallelly, no, not. I mean, you can apply for one if you do it successfully to see if you can apply for second one. However, uh, we have the courses being done parallelly, right? So when the students do the HR specific tracks at the same time, the other students, the other 20 students, right, do the strategy track. So uh, at the same time, it's not possible. No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, another question is about the uh, amount of, applicants i don't know if it's relevant to you but um how many students are accepted in winter 22 23 and also what are the criteria in shortlisting the candidates thank you we we um, take per per uh, for in total 40 yeah plus plus or less so 20 for the hr track and 20 for the strategic uh, track Right. And I mean, the ranking, um, it's, it's a mixture of, right? Do you fulfill the formal ones? Do you, what kind of grades do you have? What kind of, of course, working experience? We really want to have international students. Yeah. So please apply. The, the more international students, the better also the courses. Right. And I think each year it's very individual, right? Based on the applications we get. Yeah, I agree. Um... One last question is again about the previous degree, but in this case, the um, applicant or future applicant has already a master's degree in industrial soci sociology and personal management from outside the European Union. Uh, is, uh, can he or she apply? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We really need to look into your whole, um, what did you do in the studies? What kind of scores did you have? Do we see maybe because some, the point is, and I learned it this year, because as I said, I'm only director since March. So I did this time, the whole application part as well. And um, for my part, it was to over 200, uh, 200 applications. And Mm, you cannot uh, judge by the name of a program uh, to the content. So we really go and look, okay, what kind of courses are being there? We sometimes do research on the universities <laughs> in order to understand what the title means, what is behind it, right? Really to make sure that it fits uh, and hits the, um, uh, the requested requirements. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of the day, uh, we don't want to punish students, but we just want to make sure that you really have the level of knowledge and you can successfully um, uh, make this master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not frustrating, to... but engaging. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. To build up on the foundation already. So uh, for everyone who, yeah, we have lots of uh, thankful messages towards you. Thank you for answering the questions. Uh, for those uh, who are asking regarding specific uh, background in Bachelor, maybe it will be better that um, we will post a um, 
email, in chat, and then you could directly uh, like talk or check your uh, CV, not CV, but your profile if it fits or not. Um, and we also had a question regarding the delayed response uh, from the university. In this case, is for my side as a student or ex-student, um, I would just uh, email the program coordinator or representative. So it's always uh, good to follow up. And if you are waiting for your answer for after the deadline for a long time already, so I did it myself, <laughs> I had to email my uh, regarding my admission. So it's not a shameful thing or just wondering how the process is going. If they, when they, Whenever they have time, they will definitely res respond and follow up as well. So yes. Um, I mean, at the Harvey, what I really like, it's a small team, but they're very, very uh, passionate about the work. I have really to say, it's really nice. So even if they're really busy, they will answer you. I'm sorry, we're really busy, but we will come back to you normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, because there are some peak times. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also just got another question about English language requirements. All of these requirements I will post in the, yeah, it were already on a slide, and I will uh, post everything um, in a chat in a bit. Thank you again uh, for this engaging presentation and for participation in Q&A. Right now, I will share my screen once again to... Can I say goodbye? And yeah, please. sure, of course, of <laughs> course. Okay. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Um, yeah, right now we have another engaging presentation, uh, which will be hosted by two speakers. Here you can see Stefan Bergman, who is program develop who is from Program Developers Team, and Louise Degen. Um, and the university is not far from me. It's in Hamburg, which is quite close to Bremen and a really nice city. Another university where you would like to apply or you will be applying next uh, semester, hopefully. And they will be talking about Master in Global Technology Innovation Management, which has a really, really interesting name. And I'm sure the program is similarly very nice. And yeah, you have the chance to um, listen to the presentation and then uh, ask your questions in Q&A. I saw that Stefan was already answering some of them uh, while at the presentation. So thank you very much because it's always nice to have this direct communication. All right, the floor is yours. I'm in the background. Thank you so much. So I'll start um, sharing my screen now and I hope everyone can see it. Yes, oh, it's all works. Great, <laughs> perfect. Okay, um, hi everyone from our side as well. Uh, as we got the lovely introduction from Nino already. Um, today, Stefan and I will tell you a little bit about the master's program in global technology and innovation management and entrepreneurship. It's a very fancy name. <laughs> um, and we will tell you more details in just a moment. And our aim with this program is to pro provide excellent education for the change makers of tomorrow, as I think also the name already says. And if you directly want to jump to our website now, feel free to scan the QR code over there. Um, so you can check our website out just um, the same time as we present it. So uh, what are we going to talk about? We're going to give you a quick background also for you if you ask questions. Um, we probably will have some an answers uh, later on uh, in this presentation. So what is G-Time? Where do we come from? Um, who are we? Who's the team? And who, also who are our students? What kind of backgrounds do they have? And how could your G-Time journey look like? So starting off with what is G-Time? Um, GTAM is a two year master's program from Hamburg, so northern part of Germany, and um, we offer a jointly international um, or it's an it's a program together with two universities. So the first one is here in Hamburg the first year and the next year takes place uh, around the world. And we will tell you about the um, locations uh, in just a second. And students have the opportunity um, to study, therefore, at two international universities. Um, and get a great um, insight into the topic of t technology and innovation management and entrepreneurship, but also specialize in one specific area in the second year. 
So looking at the first and second year, because we always need to distinguish that when we talk about this program, the first year takes place here in Hamburg. And um, we are part of the Hamburg University of Technology. And here in Hamburg, students learn about the foundations of technology and innovation management and entrepreneurship. And you can see here that um, in the winter semester, the focus really lies on understanding what is innovation management about, um, getting also a little bit of background because we have very diverse students from all across the globe with different backgrounds. So what we want to provide some um, yeah, business um, understanding and understanding in corporate management in the first and second year. So we have this course foundations of corporate management. Um, and we also focus on product planning, for example, um, and technology management during the first semester, while the second semester is then a little bit more specific, focusing on topics such as sustainable innovation management, which is a very rising topic at the moment, digital transformation, um, and also marketing of innovations. Um, and here in Hamburg, we support project-based collaboration in the courses, so we won't only provide you theory, but also work together with organizations, with companies. Um, we help our students to um, become working students, and we look out and support joint supervision of project and mass thesis as, as well um, along their their yeah, their G time experience basically. And we work together with these kind of companies. Um, you can also check that out on the on, on our website and also on um, the TUHH website because also the TUHH has specific collaborations with um, organizations. Now looking at the second year, um, we have in total at the moment five partner universities and we're constantly working on finding new ones. And each partner university has a specific focus, so students can individualize their study experience. And we also distinguish between different degrees. So as you can imagine, um, every partner is a little different. Therefore, we offer double degree exchange and joint degrees in the end. Um, an exchange degree, just for you as a background, is just that you get a certificate in the end, rather than not a double or joint degree. And in total, um, we are quite international. As you can see, we um, have partners in India, um, in, uh, um, in Japan, in Europe, here in Albor and in Kaunas, so Lithuania and Denmark. And um, also in the UK with Glasgow. Now coming to where do we come from? And I will hand over here to Stefan Bergmann. Yes, as Luisa already said, um, we start here, or you would start your first year here at the Hamburg University of Technology. So a very nice city, similar to Berlin. Um, the university itself is one of the top 10 technical universities here and is founded in 1978 and has a lot of international students also. So we have a lot of international students, which is also reflected in our course. We will come to that in a minute. And we have a lot of international master programs as well. And one is G-Time here. So Global uh, Technology and Innovation Management and Entrepreneurship. So and our students, um, they come from all over the world. And we will show you with the next slide um, where they are coming from. So we have students, oh, no, first, um, uh, before we come to that, um, we have at the QHH, we have different initiatives. So we are part of the European Consortium of Innovative Universities, so which are only a few European universities um, which um, try to exchange in teaching, but also uh, try to support the students uh, with traveling between these cities. So an Erasmus day would be easier possible when you're part of these European uh, Consortium of Innovative Cities, so especially in exchange between these uh, universities is, uh, is quite easy then. Uh, we also have student initiatives, but also um, administrative initiatives like the Startup Dog, which is also supporting you where, where consultants are who would support you 
during if you want to found your own business and start your own business there are consultants which help you in getting financial support but also getting ideas for your business plan as well um, we have the danish meter which is more a student initiative where it's about um, connecting students to really engage and become entrepreneurs or develop new innovations here at the university itself and we also have a formula student racing team where you could also also be part of during your first year at Hamburg. Um, you can also check out the university rankings. We can also post them in the chat later so that you see a little bit where the TUH is located. Um, we have many, many master programs, also international master programs, which are very ranked very high. So also here in, uh, in Germany. So um, it's very good uh, programs here, which you can access. So who's behind G-Time? So G-Time, the team itself is um, consisting out of four people. So we have Professor Herstadt, who is the uh, program director, and Stefan Buse, who's the program coordinator. Um, both of them are like working a lot on the strategic vision of G-Time. So which modules should we integrate? What does make sense at the end? Uh, which students do we want to develop or what should the students learn at the end to become good innovation managers and also change makers within the world. And we also have Louise and me who are working in the background, who are supporting also you during your study, uh, study, study journey uh, to, go, to have a nice experience here. Uh, we will also host a lot of extra events uh, where I can tell you at the end a little bit more about and I already promised I want to show you where our students come from. And you can see our students normally come from all continents. So it's not only German students who join the program, it's an English taught master program. And as the name global is saying, our students come from all over the globe. So as you can see this year, 14 students joined. And they are coming from the US, uh, Colombia, Egypt, and India, Iran. So they are basically, and also from Germany, Spain, um, coming from all over the world, which is at the end creating a very nice uh, experience for the student. It's very intercultural. It's um, They are coming from dis different disciplines. So we have some who are coming from business administration. Um, some are more focusing on engineering. One is in chemical engineer. So we have different, a variety of different backgrounds, which also is showing you that um, which type of degree would be needed to join the master at the end as well. So just giving you an idea. And now we would like to highlight a bit how your G time journey could look like or should look like at the end. First, we want to talk about the application process. So the application window will open at the beginning of December. Uh, the first step would be to perform pre-check. What is a pre-check about? So it sounds like a bit strange, but simply it is you type in your first name, last name, your GPA and your university where you're coming from and which type of degree you have. And then you get already a first initial answer if you can go on with your application in the end. After you have passed the pre-check, uh, the next thing you have to do is you have to hand in the whole application, which consists of a CV, uh, your bachelor degree, transcript of record, uh, also the English language certificate, which could be a TOEFL, which is above 90 points, or IELTS, which is above 6.5 points. And after this process, the deadline for the application at the end, so you perform pre-check beginning of December or also mid of February, then you hand in your application until 1st of March. After that, you get normally in four weeks admission. So we try to be a very yeah, fast and responsive university to support and offer you the best experience also during the um, application process. So when you hand in an application, you will definitely get an answer from us. And this also fast at the end. So you will get very fast. The admission board is consisting of Professor uh, Stefan Buse and Professor Herstert. 
and they will give you admission or not, depending on your CV, uh, depending on your bachelor's degree and background. When you got admission, next is at the end the enrollment. But in between, so in April normally, we launch already a direct Q&A event just for you. And we have another Q&A event normally in July uh, where we support you and where we try to figure out which open questions you still have. We will talk a little bit more in detail about the program, but we will also show you the schedule, um, what you're going to expect, which type of events, a little more in detail, so and which professors at the end will host your classes and when they will take place in July. We already know this. So that you already have a lot of information, but also we will remember you if there is um, if there is the deadline to apply for um, for housing for a student dormitory. So we try to be there very engaged and um, responsive to give you the best experience during an application process and also which next steps you need to take. Good. And after you then at the end have successfully enrolled, G time has tuition fees. So for the first year, the tuition fees are around 6,500 euros. Um, this is just because it's an international joint master program where we have a little bit more extra work, especially about the coordination with the partner universities. Um, therefore, you have to pay the tuition fees, which already include the semester fee, with also public transportation ticket included for the whole semester and for the whole year at the end. You would start your journey in September 2022. And you would start with two induction weeks. Um, the current cohort, so the 14 students, are sitting one room next to me, and they are currently playing a business simulation. So what we try to do in the first two weeks, we try to offer you like a kind of good foundation to start into the semester. So you will have classes on communication skills, how to do a good presentation, but also to be how to be mindful and not have the mind full at the end. So, and also a little bit on leadership and intercultural communication, but also on foundations of business management. So the end of these induction weeks are a business simulation where you're a little bit hands-on, learn a little bit more. And then you would start in October into your normal semester, which ends by March. And also by March, you need to make your decision. As Luisa said, the first year is in Hamburg. So winter term and summer term. And for your second year, you would go to one of our five partner universities at the end. So you have the choice. There's no kind of limitation that um, uh, first comes, first serve or something like that. So if you would like to go to Beppo, for example, which is very hard to go to Japan as an international student. So there are not so many opportunities. That's why we are very happy to have such a good partner there. Um, then you have to make a decision until 1st of March. So we will host during this time Q&A sessions with the partners. You will get to know them uh, so that you can make a good decision at the end how your specialization at the end will look like because all five partner universities have a different focus at the end. So we have technology venturing, but we also have entrepreneurial engineering and art work, for example. So it's up to you what you want to do in the end, also in your future life. In the second semester, you're still at your age. Uh, you have another induction week where you will play a second business simulation, which is much more advanced, which is more an international focus different markets, so all the 40 students, they will come back and play another round uh, before the summer term, which will also be a lot of fun. And also, as Louise said, what we try to do is to integrate a lot of uh, companies in our work and also in our lectures that you have a kind of hands-on projects uh, with, and also problems which you have to deal with. For example, in January, we will have a company called Aldi Nord, which is a supermarket chain here in Germany. And the G-Time students will run a like ideation workshop for them in January over three days. So which is very cool and very innovative for them as well. So it will be a tough challenge for the G-Time students. 
And second year, you would, in 2023, you would go abroad, you would go to one of our five partner universities and start your third semester there and also the fourth and your last semester uh, during your master's. And then you would finish your master at the end after four semesters and um, you would get, depending on which partner university you choose, you would get different types of degrees. As Louise said, if you go to Aalborg, it would be a degree from Hamburg University of Technology plus an exchange certificate. If you would go, for example, to Glasgow, it would be a joint degree uh, where Glasgow University, Strathclyde University and Hamburg University of Technology would offer together a degree. And if it would be, for example, Kaunas, it would be a double degree. So one from Kaunas and one from Hamburg University of Technology. Yes, and then it's the graduation at the end. So yes, you have completed the Master of Science. And what's next? This is always a good question. So what to do next? Uh, therefore, we have a few G-Time students who already successfully finished uh, their study program. So you can see here, the students at the end, yeah, jump into different career paths. So you have a founder which uh, founded his own um, business and which also got support from an accelerator here in the north of Germany. But you could also be part of a trainee program uh, where you are jumping into a multinational company and are working in different countries at the end. Or you could take a complete different way and at the end become a PhD student and pursue a scientific career as Louise, who started this presentation, did. Or as well, another trainee. So as you can see, normally the G-Time students have very high chances to get very good positions and also very different positions, I would say. So from a founder founding your own business or starting your own business, which is a very good opportunity, or becoming a PhD or pursuing a scientific career or academic career, or becoming part of a multinational company. So that's basically it. And now we are looking forward to your questions. And again, if you want to check out our website, um, scan the QR code. I think that's sometimes really helpful. Um, also, if you want to know specifically, I already saw some questions regarding the tuition fees. You can find that um, on our website. Okay, Thank maybe, you. I don't know, Nino, how we do it, but uh, I think yeah. I got a question here from Raul Ramines. So mm -hmm. he has three questions directly. So he would like to study first year, uh, second year in Lithuania, so in Kaunas. So yes, then in Kaunas, the tuition fees are around 3,000 euros, um, plus the tuition fees from Hamburg, which you're correct, it would be around 10,000 euros for two years. Um, after finishing my master's, you would be able to and eligible to apply for working permit here in Germany, so you can come back and get a working permit as well. And um, maybe so to follow up on that question, um, you will um, still be part of the TUHH, which means that until the end of your studies, you are part of TUHH. So you have the chance to get, I think uh, there was this question for the 18 month post study visa, mm -hmm. you have that opportunity and you don't really need to look at the other partner universities country there. So you're still part of TVHH along the, these two years. Yes. And I think the career outcomes we already presented, I hope it was covered by our presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So thank you very much. Um, I saw Louisa was also answering uh, some questions in uh, in Q and A in chat directly, but I think there was a very interesting question which might be might be also um, nice for others. This is about the track the second year. Does it depend which university to you go to on your previous background? So Louisa already answered it, but I think it might be a question for some others as well. That's why it would be nice to repeat it once again. 
Yeah, so um, in general, as Stefan already said, we have a lot of different backgrounds. So we have um, engineers, we have um, one student this year, I think it's the first um, who studied business and psychology, for example. So it's uh, very interesting and broad. And the second year does not depend on, or uh, your choice for the second year does not depend on your bachelor's degree. So um, if you um, got into G time, you can choose your second year partner, but there are may be some limitations regarding the um, the numbers of people um, the second year partner university offers. So let's say uh, until now, because we are still quite small and new program, we don't have these limitations. But as soon as the program, of course, gets bigger, um, some universities, for example, might say we only take 10 people. But in general, um, it does not depend on that. And usually our students get the, um, their, their first choice for the second year partner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um... Also, for those asking about the fees, uh, you can always go to the page which was shared in chat several times and you can see more details there. We have also a question regarding scholarships uh, just from my side. Uh, never like Even if the university does not have a scholarship itself, you can always uh, apply for DID or you, maybe your home country has some scholarships and you can use the scholarship to come to Germany. But if Louise or Stefan, you would like to add. Um, yeah, you will. Yes, we also have some uh, scholarships listed on our website, which are also in the fees and funding webpage. Um, and additionally, I would recommend definitely the My German University uh, side on how to get a scholarship. I think this is always very, very good with a lot of information regarding this topic. So thank you very much. And I see, see many messages saying, directing thanks towards you for the nice presentation and the nice program. And uh, right now we are a bit behind the schedule, but I would like to ask uh, Professor Dr. Christian Hederer to uh, join our live session uh, with the master program in European management. And here on the slide, you can see uh, the special guest, uh, Technical University of Applied Sciences Wildau, and also another map so that you know again where are you going <laughs> or which cities you would like to visit when you're already there. Uh, thank you for joining and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I will try to share my screen immediately. Okay. So does everyone see the title slide, European yes, Management in A with the globe? Yes, okay. we do, thank Perfect. you. Okay, well, thank you very much. And, and uh, thanks uh, particularly to Nino and the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present the MA program in European Management at the Technical um, uh, University of Applied Sciences at Wildau. So my name is Christian Hederer. I'm a professor of uh, economics and international economic policy, um, having worked at the university since uh, 2017. Okay, well, uh, very briefly on the on the school, on the university, um, probably uh, the name Wildau will not be very familiar to you. Uh, this is basically um, a, a town which is uh, in the uh, urban area of Berlin. I'm uh, showing you a map uh, after that uh, slide immediately, so a kind of more detailed map here. It is a University of Applied Sciences, which means um, it's called uh, in, in Germany, that's, that's a class of universities which is called Fachhochschulen, which are basically designed to have a strongly applied uh, focus and less of a theoretical focus than the classical universities. It is located in the federal state of Brandenburg, which is uh, basically the one surrounding Berlin. And it is the largest university of applied sciences there, which however does not mean that it could be called a mass university. I have provided you with the most important numbers here. So overall, there are about 3,600 students, 80 professors and uh, 350 staff, uh, which is, uh, however, on an increasing trend in general, uh, particularly concerning the professorship and also the staff. Uh, we consist of two main faculties. Uh, the one is the one that I obviously belong to, namely business and law. Uh, the other one on which the, and that's actually why it's called technical university, has a stronger, or at least a, a deeper tradition, is uh, engineering and natural sciences. So that one was already run in former Eastern Germany, 
And then the, uh, the other faculty, business and law, was, was essentially established in the early 1990s. So it's also a quite established uh, part of the school right now. OK, there is another map. So this is the urban area of Berlin. And what you're seeing here basically is that, of course, Wildau is in the outskirts. But um, at the same time, it is, in fact, um, uh, so Berlin is, 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 is within reach. It is in the S-Bahn, uh, the, the semi-fast train uh, network of Berlin. So it takes about 45 minutes to get to the center. And that makes quite a nice combination of a pleasant, almost rural environment with the accessibility of the German capital. Now, what are the basics of the program? Well, it's a Master of Art program. Um, it has uh, four semesters where uh, three semesters would be devoted to coursework. And then uh, you would go ahead with a master thesis. All the courses are taught uh, in English. Um, there is one course where there would also be an option for uh, uh, French or Spanish that is called European Identities. And the thesis can written in English. I think the German option is not that interesting for you. So this is a public university, which means that there are essentially no tuition fees. Uh, the only thing that you would have to pay, apart from uh, the, the, the cost of living that, of course, you have to face, would be approximately, so don't nail me on that, but it would be approximately 300 euros uh, per semester. Uh, the group size is fairly small, um, so regularly we have something between uh, 20 and 30 students. It might become more. We have seen quite an uptick in uh, application numbers uh, recently, uh, but that is normally uh, what uh, you can expect. So it is, uh, in fact, uh, quite a familiar um, uh, group. Okay, um, so this is the curriculum. And let me uh, give an, an overview of what is done here. So the core is what we call international business concentrations. And international business concentrations provide you with a choice of uh, three out of four fields. And this is essentially uh, the uh, core of uh, international business, if you want to call it like that. So we have uh, international financial management. We have international human resources management. We have marketing and we have accounting and international accounting. So that's the business core. Uh, and then um, there are um, kind of more general oriented uh, courses around that, which is uh, management and leadership skills. So negotiations, conflict management, and project management. Uh, the kind of specialty of the program, um, and this is really, I think, what distinguishes our curriculum and our program from many others, is that we really want you to look beyond business. And basically, that means, uh, and that's the reason why it's called European management, to really look on the European level and to get familiar with the European Union and the policy aspects and even cultural aspects uh, of Europe. And that is what this first block basically means. So there's a course in European public policy that is already in the first semester and taught by myself, which is then followed up by European economic policy, where we basically cover all the important questions uh, reaching from the internal market, competition policy, also the euro, the economics of the euro, and so on. And then a colleague of mine who is not a business person and not an economist, notabene, he, he teaches, a, I think, a very interesting course, which is called European Identities. And that one really takes you beyond uh, the business framework. That one provides you with a quite broad introduction into European history, into cultural questions. There are also excursions to selected places to Berlin and so on. Um, we have um, optional, on an optional basis, um, an international business project. That is actually something that you can, um, that you can design very freely uh, on your own. So the only thing basically you need is a supervisor, um, and those supervisors will then often uh, also get you into touch with private business. And you can essentially formulate the project more or less on your own and work on that over uh, two semesters at maximum. And then last but not least, there are compulsory, what we call compulsory elective modules, which again are kind of a possibility to broaden your horizon, for example, towards international trade and investment, again, taught by myself, European labor law and other subjects that basically change uh, from year to year. So here um, is uh, the um, basically the time the time schedule. Um, I don't think there is time and necessity to go through all the details, but basically what you are seeing here is that you would start with the uh, so you have this uh, core on the uh, left hand side, which are the which is international business and the international business uh, concentrations, including the international business project. And on the right hand side, you see the kind of surrounding program, um, which is, as I said, European public policy, European identities, and also, also these kind of general management uh, uh, competencies uh, that you are taught. In the fourth uh, semester, then, uh, this would be exclusively devoted to writing the master's thesis. 
and uh, you would conclude the program with a collo so-called colloquium, which is an oral examination of the two examiners who would um, supervise uh, your, mark your master thesis. Okay, well, um, as I already mentioned, there's some freedom in this curriculum to cost customize it uh, according to your needs and interests. Uh, so the first thing is that you uh, have a choice uh, of uh, three out of four of those business concentrations. Uh, so you can uh, already uh, set a certain concentration here. You can choose, if that is of interest uh, to you, uh, the language of the European Identities module, which means that uh, there is a German, uh, a French or a Spanish track here, if this is something that interests you. You have the elective modules, and last but not least, you have the double degree and exchange program in the third semester. So staying abroad, that was the last point uh, I mentioned. Uh, we have uh, overall, um, I think, a quite a good network of, of, of corporations. Uh, you have them uh, in the overview here uh, on the map. So normally, the idea would be that you go abroad for the third semester. So you would do then uh, two semesters, of course, where you would go abroad for one semester. I mean, we have had cases where this was even longer for one year. So um, we have a quite, um, I think, competent international office uh, that is very, very helpful in kind of uh, uh, finding tailored solution for your needs as well. But normally the curriculum, um, if you want it at all, so it's not obligatory, would foresee that you do that in the third semester. And I think um, besides the uh, partner universities that we have here, or the, at least the locations are on that list, uh, I think what, what is really pretty attractive about the program are the two double degree corporations that we have. One is with the University Lille in northern France. Uh, that, uh, I think, is quite a, a profile program in European studies once again. And you don't have to know French for that matter. So the program itself uh, is in English. Uh, so there would be no language barrier in that sense. Uh, the other one runs in Spanish. So uh, Cordoba, very nice city, I've been there, um, offers um, the other uh, possibility to, uh, to attend a double degree. You would even get your Spanish degree signed by the Spanish king himself, if you find that attractive. But of course, you need the competency in Spanish because uh, that is a program that uh, at least uh, those, uh, the semester where you are there uh, would be taught in Spanish uh, rather than in English. Uh, and scholarships are usually available. Uh, so the main, uh, the main track here is, of course, uh, Erasmus. Many of you will have heard about that already. Uh, they are offering financial support. And um, if, you go, if you move outside the European Union, there are also possibilities and you will, uh, I think, quite effectively be supported um, to obtain that if needed by our international office. Okay, just go on with the next slide. So what are the admission requirements? Um, so first of all, you need a bachelor's degree um, in a field that is at least widely, uh, in a wide sense, related to uh, business or economics. Yeah? So normally what we would expect is business management or law, but we also have had applicants, for example, who had studied international relations or political science. So if they had a reasonable economics or business curriculum, then we would admit them. So um, the, the fact that you uh, don't have a degree in those specific fields is not necessarily a reason that you would not be admitted, but you would need some kind of business or economics background in order to succeed. Uh, we are then testing quite obviously the English uh, level. Uh, and the two main options are on the slide. So either you, you um, prove that you have C1 uh, level, for example, by a TOEFL test, or uh, you have already attended a bachelor degree uh, in, in full English. Um, so if it's in full English, this is actually not on the slide, uh, then you would not have to prove um, anything uh, beyond that. Um, and um, if uh, the bachelor program uh, has uh, 40 plus credit points in English, then it would have to have a B2 entry level at the beginning of that bachelor program. Then what we also ask for, and that in practice is the, is the kind of criterion that is most difficult to fulfill, is the international working experience. So uh, that is something that we really want to see uh, because we want to attract people who have uh, collected at least a minimum amount of outside academia experience as well. And uh, basically, there are two uh, possibilities for that. So it's not an extensive requirement because it's, uh, it's eight weeks and the, the experience obviously has to be relevant. Um, and um, the two possibilities you have to fulfill that is either, ideally speaking, to attend, um, for example, an internship, not necessarily, but mainly an internship abroad. Abroad means not in your home country. Yeah? Or um, what we also accept, uh, if you have attended uh, an interesting job at the home country and you um, are able to prove, normally via uh, confirmation by the employer, 
that this job had a substantial international content, uh, then you would also el be eligible for the program. Okay, that already brings me to the end. So um, what, uh, from our point of view, would be strong arguments for taking up and applying for that program. So you will get uh, a combination of solid education in the core business, in the core business subjects with a generalist perspective. So you, um, if you have an interest on that, so really uh, broaden up a little bit and, and particularly get um, familiar with European affairs, so that is really the, the point here, then I think that would be the right program for you. Um, Complementing that, there are the two double degree options, which I think are, are both very attractive uh, with uh, strong economies within the European Union and also quite attractive cities and university for that matter. Um, it is um, up to now at least a relatively small uh, program in terms of the students. So there's a lot of interaction going on. Um, it, it's also quite, um, in fact, uh, very international. It has become very international recently. So um, in the last class, we had uh, about 50% uh, of students who were actually of a non-European background. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the Germans were constituting something like 20% uh, and the rest was from, from in, within Europe. So it's a quite diverse group, uh, basically uh, from all over the globe. And that makes it, um, I think, particularly stimulating. And the intensive interaction is also related to the teachers. So given that the groups are relatively small, given that it's a master's program rather than a bachelor one, uh, normally uh, the, the interaction with professors works well and professors are really willing to basically um, uh, also follow your interests and your needs. And last but not least, there's Berlin. So as I said, um, I think it's quite an attractive uh, combination which I tend to enjoy myself. So on the one hand, you are not uh, basically subject to the everyday stress um, of, the, of the metropolitan um, environment here. So the, the environment is very relaxed. It's almost rural or at least suburban. But on the other hand, it's very easy to get to Berlin. There's an excellent uh, railway connection. So maybe some of you, I don't go back uh, to this slide now, but uh, realized on the picture of the campus that I showed to you that there is actually um, a, a station of the semi-fast train right beside the campus. So some people ironically say that this uh, basically belongs to the campus. So it's the S-Bahn station of the campus. And that would take you to the city uh, within something like 45 or maximum 60 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. And I look forward to any questions. Thank you very much for the um, presentation and for being with us. Uh, right now, um, I think the presentation was very in detail and um, there were no uh, questions directed to the program, but we have a very uh, like, um, I'm not, not a bit unrelated question, which says, is it true that international students better study outside Berlin to improve their German? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, <laughs> and I think, uh, I mean, I, if you wanted to put it like that, I think uh, the answer would be yes. You know? Because, I mean, Berlin is obviously a very international nowadays, and uh, the Germans have a certain habit to um, change uh, to English immediately if they, if they kind of realize that uh, you are not proficient in, enough in German which is a striking difference to France, for example. I mean, in France, if you start to talk French uh, and if it's ever so bad, people will immediately engage you and they will try to uh, kind of uh, improve your language uh, skills in French because they are just um, happy to speak their native language. So the mentality is a bit different in Germany. So it might, inf as you're saying, as you're implying, it might be a little bit hard to really get the German speaking experience in Berlin. Um, whereas Wildau is really a kind of borderline thing. Yeah? So. Um, it is, of course, located in the metropolitan area of Berlin, so you can get quite easily into that international environment. But uh, when you look at the local population, of course, and what is happening right around the campus, then um, it is quite provincial, no doubt about that. Yeah? And then um, if you really uh, get into touch with uh, the people and you want to talk to them, then it would definitely be advisable to know German because they will not be able to understand your English and talk to you in English. So that would be my answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we also had a question about the um, like uh, requirements. So the person says, I had all the requirements and won't be selected. How do we know that we can be picked up the next year? They said the uh, GPA, they assess the GPA and I have 2.1 and also the motivation letter. So yeah. Uh, Maybe uh, so up, to now, um, up to now, we do not have a fixed limit um, with respect to GPA. I mean, that, that might change in the future. That always depends a little bit on the number of applicants. 
uh, but I would say 2.1 normally uh, should be fine. So the more important thing is that there's really this relevant uh, degree um, as such. Um, and the other question was the motivation letter. Well, this, this is something that we like to see, of course, and uh, it's it's part uh, it's part of the criteria. It's not necessarily the most uh, the most important one. So as I said in practice, and I have uh, been checking those applications now for two years. In practice, the real barrier that um, some of uh, some of the applicants cannot surpass is the international working experience. And this is something, on the other hand, that we are serious about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you um, if you really had a job. Um, I mean, once again, it is possible uh, if you had a job in your home country, so that is not an excuse, an excluding criterion as such, but then you would really need to prove that it has an international component. Mm -hmm. So if that's not the case, then uh, it would not be possible for us to admit you. Thank you. Um, and since the program is uh, very kind of, it's also broad and at the same precise program, it's like this double uh, phase, uh, is it possible like the workload of the program is it possible to have a mini job in between or it should be only all study uh, concentrated because the university is next to berlin and it's yes. also maybe easier for international students to find a mini job mm -hmm. obviously it depends on the capacity of a student but as a professor how would you recommend to behave uh well i mean uh if you ask me that specifically how I would recommend to behave as a professor, I would say uh, don't go for a job but study. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because officially uh, the official uh, uh, curriculum foresees a full-time uh, a full-time uh, occupation, of course, a full-time curriculum, uh, and that would be the kind of ideal version. Um, in practical terms, I have to say that we have quite a few students uh, who are in fact uh, pursuing part-time jobs uh, outside their study. It's not something that we necessarily recommend, but on the other hand, I could not say that it's impossible. Um, there's another option which I should mention, which is uh, to uh, pursue that program part-time right away. So that is possible. Yeah? So there is a kind of alternative curriculum that you can enter, then it will take you double time. So the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the part-time, I think it's seven semesters or eight, I'm not completely sure, but it's roughly, roughly double time uh, with a kind of tailored uh, curriculum then. So, so that, that is a possibility and that of course would then definitely allow you to, uh, to work part-time. Thank you very much. So for all those who maybe joined a bit later or didn't see, the links to the study program are shared in the chat um, and all the requirements, the contact information is also there. So feel free to uh, check it, copy it, save it. Like it's the same, it applies uh, to all the programs which were presented today. I really apologize for taking a longer of your like taking it longer but i think the most important thing is that everyone got the, their questions answered and i hope it was a really fruitful webinar for me it was really interesting even though even if i'm not from the field um it was nice to listen to all the presenters if any of you have anything to add you are free to do so um I'm referring to all the speakers. If not, then I will let you go because I took you already <laughs> some of your time, which I wasn't supposed to do. Uh, however, thank you again, everyone. Um, thank you, Louise and Stefan and Professor Rudzinska for also answering questions in Q&A uh, chat section. Um, and yeah, Professor Heather, thank you for joining and also participating in this live Q&A. I wish you all a wonderful, afternoon, evening, morning, depending on where in the world you are based right now, and see you in our upcoming webinars. Thank you very much.